Um, I do not believe getting a good grade is nearly as important as creating strong people filled with integrity, willing to fight for truth uh, at all. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Guys, I'm going to be reacting to Charlie's Kick debate college student at California State Fullerton. Guys, let's get straight into this. Um, I was wondering if you could give some encouraging words to students who are being alienated by teachers, their communities, and their friends um, because of their Christian or conservative values. It's a really important question. So uh, students there, raise your hand if you think you've been graded differently or treated differently because of your beliefs. Yeah, basically every hand goes up. So um, that's right. Marco says worth it. Um, yeah, look, I want to say this. So there's a, uh, there's a disagreement on the right, um, and I, I have a lot of respect for Ben Shapiro, but he has a different answer than I do on this, and I'll kind of say this. So uh, Ben, and this is not precisely your question, but I'll incorporate it. So the question, here's the question. Do you lie on your term paper or how you present yourself to your professors to get a good grade? That's a question a lot of people ask, right? It's like it's easier to kind of hide and to not confront things. So Ben says, yes, uh, lie, misrepresent your beliefs, get the good grade, and get through college or high school. Um, I see it differently. Um, I do not believe getting a good grade is nearly as important as creating strong people filled with integrity, willing to fight for truth uh, at all. And so now why am I bringing this up? Um, because if you, if you wanted to kind of, those of you that are conservative wanted to have an easier life, then just pretend to not be a conservative and just keep your head down and, you know, just pretend to be something that you're not and delete your social media. I think there's a lot more important things in life than that. So the word of encouragement is this. Uh, first, something that is true uh, that you don't want to hear, and then something that is true that you probably will want to hear. Um, it's never going to stop. You will be harassed, called names, demonized, uh, victimized. Uh, you will be smeared and slandered. Uh, you will lose a lot of your friends, um, and you'll doubt whether it's all worth it. Sound fun, right? Well, here's the second thing, though. You will be a stronger, tougher, more resilient person that will look around at your peers one day while they're worried about whether or not they're being called the right pronouns, and you will, be, you will have your direction, you'll have resolve, you'll have an intestinal fortitude, you'll have gusto that will run circles around an increasingly fragile society and you will have what is so lacking in America today, grittiness and toughness. And that is something that I want to instill in every single young person. So, yeah, it's going to be tough. We here at Turning Point USA are here to help you get through that, through our networking events, through our Young Women's Leadership Summit, through our chapter events, through the events like this tonight, so you know you're not alone. But we want to try to continue to rise up the citizen of young people and students to be able to take a stand. But it's going to be tough, but it's worth it. God bless you. Thanks for being here tonight. Hi, Charlie. My name is Jared. I'm the president of the Turning Point chapter at your Belinda High School. Awesome. Um, so last week on April 5th in a 3-2 vote, my school board passed a resolution to ban critical race theory in my district. So my question is, what's the next steps to ensuring that we have a good education yeah. even after that ban? Yeah, that's great. So it's a two-part dance. Um, so that's great. Now you need to say, okay, let's get pro-American curriculum in our schools. So what does that look like, right? Um, Hillsdale College has done a lot of work in this. Uh, we're starting to do a lot at Turning Point USA. But we have to teach people, what is the American story? What is the, prop, what is the proper way to view American history? What is America? Was it a mistake? Was it something that just kind of fell out of the sky? There's just a couple things I'll share here that I think could really excite high school students that they're definitely not taught in school. Um, America was summoned into existence at a time and a place. That is very unusual. In fact, it's almost never happened before in human history. Most civilizations or countries stumble into existence. They're not summoned into existence. I want you to think about that. There was a decision to create America. China just kind of existed and, you know, it was kind of the Yangtze River Valley civilization and just kind of built into itself. Indus River Valley into India and so on and so forth. But America was a group of people that made a decision, founding fathers, we have a set of principles, we don't like what's happening, we're going to declare independence of things that are always true. And I'm afraid that most young people are not just being taught that even worse, they're being taught the opposite. They're being taught that the founding fathers were racist, bigoted slave owners. And they don't know their history. They don't know that the first anti-slavery convention in America was hosted in Philadelphia by Benjamin Franklin in 1775. They don't know that 9 out of 13 states before the Constitution was ratified in 1787 had already independently abolished slavery. 
They didn't, a lot of young people never taught that Vermont was the first state to abolish slavery in 1777, inspired by the Declaration of Independence. So the next step is get your local school district to not just teach this, but inspire young people to be excited about the country they live in. Um, a lot of young people, I think, are unnecessarily depressed um, and negative about their life because they've been told the one thing that you have a yearning to associate with your country is awful. Deep down, I think most people actually want to support their home. And you kind of see that when you start to see like a Dodgers hat here and like a Rams hat here. Like that's a different way of kind of showing association that you care about where you're from. Yet the one thing they're trying to get rid of is the jersey of America. Like, and it, th that's something I think that excites people. It creates happier lives. It creates stronger communities. When all of a sudden you're like, you know what? I, in Amer here in California, have a direct connection to a time where people decided to say that self-government was a moral issue. And that separation of powers and consent to the governed was, is worthy of protection and preservation, and they were willing to do something about it. I think that actually creates a much happier country to live in than one where you think everything is racist, bigoted, awful, colonialistic, homophobic, and backwards. At some point, that only way you could solve that question is to revolutionize the country, and that's what they're trying to get young people to do. It's like if all that buildup was nothing but evil, then you might as well just burn it all down to the ground. So we as conservatives, and to answer your question in your Belinda, the home of Richard Nixon, if I'm not mistaken, right, um, is, uh, is to do this, which is to say to your local school district, we want to create a curriculum that creates grateful and informed citizens and an informed sense of patriotism. That is not political. That is essential to the survival of the country. Thanks for being here tonight. God bless you. Hey, Charlie. My name is Jonathan. I go to Cal State Fullerton. I guess I have a simple question. Um, like in a family full of like conservatives, we're kind of the minority in the in a grand family. I just want to know how I can converse with the rest of my family being like liberal, and especially my friends as well, um, without obviously causing discourse and too much hurt. I guess. Yeah. Um, well, never be the source of hurt. That's my first piece of advice. So don't be the one to call names or you know um, try to disassociate from people, but. I think every conservative here in this audience would agree that you lost friends, but they left you. You didn't leave them. Uh, yeah. A lot of, and that's, I, I never support the severing of friendships over politics, but I'm also realistic. It happens all the time where people stop being friends with you because of politics. I bet every single person in this room could resonate with that. So look, this is a, this is a situation where you're going to have to balance. Are you going to tell the truth when there might be a consequence to it? Right? And, it's also how you say it. It's also how you communicate it. Having that balance of 100% grace with 100% truth, trying to be magnanimous in how you communicate, I think is really, really important. But also, um, you know, understanding that in family dynamics, um, there, you have to prioritize whether or not you want the family to kind of stay together or whether or not you want to make a political point. And I don't say this advice lightly. There's some politics that should, there's some families that should never discuss politics. Um, and there's an argument for that. It's like they're so rigid in their beliefs, it's just going to cause a civil war. Now, some people say, you know what? I'm going to, you know, say what I want to say. And I know personally dozens of examples of parents that don't talk to children anymore. I think that's really unhealthy. I think it's not good at all. Um, but it's a balance. I think that everyone should know where you stand. Um, and then the final piece of advice is go to work on the family members where there's a little bit of openness. If you believe that you're right, if we believe we're right, then start to send articles, ask questions, start to understand their, you know, their points of where they think that they view the world in a certain way. Like, well, I just want to help people. Like, okay, then start to find things where all of a sudden left-wing policies are not helping people, right? Like, how exactly does it help people when the border's wide open and women are being sex trafficked across there every single day? How does that help people exactly? And start to ask those questions. But, um, and then with your friends, I mean, I kind of answered that already. Just, um, you know, you're probably going to lose friends, and they'll probably continue. And uh, also know the difference between good faith arguments and bad faith arguments. Do not waste your time in bad faith arguments. Just don't. If people are just putting their hands in their ears, saying, I don't want to hear anymore, just disengage. But if people are really curious and they're dialoguing with you, that's worth your time. But don't waste your time. You, you, and you could use your own prudence and your wisdom to navigate that. Thanks for being here tonight. Appreciate it. Guys, this is amazing. For me, I honestly believe that a lot of people have different ideas and different ideologies. But we'll be honest, like when it comes to politics, see, you can argue with your family or your friends and you'd be like, 
you actually think this way and how how are we related how do you have this kind of mindset and it's actually heartbreaking sometimes when you argue some certain points with your friends especially and you see the way they think and you're like how did we become friends like how did i know you like where did we meet and stuff like that but i honestly believe that people have different ideologies and you can actually teach or pass your knowledge to them but most people see it as you being disrespectful and most people are rigid with their ideas and they don't really want to hear it from you but back to this like when we talk about you being a student i being a conservative or being religious and your lecturers don't really want you and i honestly believe that ben shapiro is saying what is happening in this modern age because a lot of people know that there are only two genders and they just want to continue living their life and they don't have the strength to actually argue they're just like yes we agree that there are 34 genders you can be he them them whatever like they really don't want to have that kind of argument with anybody i just feel like i know the truth you are delusional let's just go with it but like i honestly believe that i should say the truth because like the truth is so society free and you hiding under the fact that you just want to live your life is going to create more room for lots of rubbish okay so we think about this so to like share subscribe to my channel i'll see you next time guys Peace.